Hey everyone, it's Kirk here again at Option Alpha. So in this video, what I wanna do is go through what expected value is or EV. That's basically what I talked about in the last video in this automated trading series, because what we wanna to try to do is take advantage of potentially positive expected value trading opportunities. And so the last video, we got a lot of questions and emails from people asking, what is EV? What does it mean? How do I even use it? Why should I care about it? Does it even make sense? And so I wanna go through this in this video for you all today. So as always, if you have any questions or comments, please let us know in the comments below. Also, I put a bunch of resources in the description of this video, so feel free to check those out as well. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually consider a betting game, because this is really the best way to learn what expected value is, or what we call EV, is to learn it from the ground up, and that is using a very simple analogy, and that is just a simple betting game. So. There's a betting game, you call it a coin flip game if you want to, but let's consider this betting game or coin flip game where there's a 40% chance of winning $500 and a 60% chance of losing $200. So really quickly, before you even think about it, would you play this game? And so the calculation you're probably doing in your mind is something along the lines of trying to figure out, okay, if I win 40% of the time and I win $500 when I win, does that make up for the fact that I might lose 60% of the time, and when I lose, I'm gonna lose $200. So what you are doing in your mind right now is you are trying to calculate expected value. Like if I play this game and I do this game a lot of times, not just one time, but many, many, many times into the future, am I likely to make money on this game? And so the calculation that you're probably doing is something along the lines of this, where you're taking the probability of winning, so the 40%, that's the probability of winning, and the money that you can win, and you're multiplying those together. And then you're adding to that the probability of losing, which is 60% in this case, and you're multiplying that by the amount of money that you would lose when you lose. And what you end up with is you end up with an expected outcome or an expected value of this betting game of positive $80. So 500 times 40% is 200. And then you add that to negative 200 times 60%. That's minus negative 120. So that you subtract that out and you still end up with a positive expected outcome or a positive expected value, something we call EV. So if you were to play this game, hypothetically, you were to play this game where the only outcomes are you either win or lose on this game. And if you win, 40% of the time you make 500 bucks. If you lose, 60% of the time, you're gonna lose $200. So you know you play this a lot, maybe like a thousand times, you're actually likely to overall make money on this game. And so the expected outcome of each independent occurrence of this game is approximately $80. So that gives you the confidence to say, hey, yeah, I'll play that game with somebody for sure because I know that over time, I will end up winning on this game. And even if I lose a couple hands or rolls or flips, however you want to define it, over time, if I end up making a lot of trades, I know I'm going to win on this game. Okay, so now let's switch the math around. And this is where it gets really interesting because if you start switching the math around and remember all trading and probabilities and investing is based on this math and all these things that you can do with math in your trades. If you switch the math around and let's assume now more of a lottery type game where you have a 1% chance of winning $100. So almost an asymmetric type bet where you have a small chance of winning, but if you win, you're gonna win big. That's what a lot of traders try to go after, right? It's like small chance, small trades, you know, those lottery tickets where they try to win really big and that chance exists. So there's a 1% chance in this game of winning $100 and a 99% chance of losing $2. So it's probably a small game that you're playing, a small buying game like a lottery ticket, where you have a big upside and the downside is pretty limited, but the likelihood of, occur of that downside occurring is really, really high. And so again, in your mind, you're probably doing this calculation, but we did it here for you. So now here's your new expected value calculation. Now we take the probability of making money on the profitable trade, right? The profitable side, which is 1%, and we'd multiply that by $100. So we get the expected outcome of that side of the trade. And then we add that to the expected outcome of the losing side, which is we're gonna lose $2, but that's going to occur 99% of the time. 
And what you get is you get an expected outcome that is negative. It's a negative expected outcome. And so what this means is that if you were to play this game over and over and over again, you might have a run of winners where you win $100 and then you win $100 again and you think you've got this thing made. But if you keep playing this game, you're expected to lose 98 cents for every expected outcome that you play. And so this is the math that most people don't even consider. You know it now and hopefully you've learned it now if you didn't even know it existed. But this is the type of math that you have to be doing inside of your trades. And it's the same math, which is why casinos make money. They're the reason people lose money at casinos and casinos make money is because casinos have mastered this expected outcome game or this expected value game for you and your gambling. They know that they have a slight edge and they just need a lot of, lot of occurrences. They need you to gamble a lot which is why, by the way, they have low table limits. They force you to make lots of, lots of bets, right? You can't do these huge bets. You have to do it $20 at a time because they know over time if they get you in there with enough gambles or enough spins or enough plays that they're going to net out their expected value. And for you, that's a negative expected value when you walk into a casino. So the same thing now can be applied, obviously, to options trading. And we should apply the same criteria to how we choose our trades. So let's go through an example of how we can do this with a sample trade. So let's say we're looking at a bullish put spread. So this is a pretty standard, pretty popular option strategy where you're selling options out of the money. You have a bullish position on the stock, or at least you don't think it's going to go significantly lower. And so you sell some options. You sell, let's say, the 50 strike put option and then you buy the 45 strike put option. Pretty standard trade, and let's assume maybe the stock is trading at say $60 or something. Well, if we have this type of trade, then what we can also do is we can also figure out through probabilities and math, right, what the probability is or the expected probability that the stock closes above that 50 strike. So the stock can continue higher, it can go lower, it can stay the same, but we can pretty much find out in most platforms and through the use of implied volatility or historical volatility and calculate how far it is from expiration, that this potential probability, let's just say for this argument, is 70%. So the likelihood or the probability that the stock stays above $50 is 70%. So there's a 70% chance that you make your maximum profit of $100. And then again, for this example, let's assume that we can also calculate what the probability is that the stock trades below $45. So if the stock goes really low and starts trading below $45, we can assume that this probability of this happening is, let's say, 25%. So now that we have these numbers in place, we can then calculate what our potential expected value is for this trading opportunity. And what you might do is you might do it this way. Now, I'm going to tell you right away that this is the way most people do it. It's the way that anybody on a platform typically does it because it is the easiest way to do it. But it is also wrong. And I'm going to get to that here in a second. But here's the way that most people do it. And then I'll show you why it's wrong. The first way that they do it is they do it this way, which is the same way that we've been kind of using the examples before of calculating expected value or EV. We take $100 of maximum profit times the likelihood of reaching that profit, which is 70%. And then we take a negative $400 maximum loss and the likelihood of getting to that maximum loss of 25%. When you calculate all these numbers together, you get a negative expected value. Now, whether this is a positive expected value or negative expected value doesn't matter. The calculation is flawed this way, and that is because it assumes a binary outcome. Now, if we go back to our chart here, the only thing that we're doing here is we're assuming that only one of these things occur. Either we make our maximum loss, or, or we make our reach our maximum loss, or we make our maximum profit above 50. What we're doing here is we're completely ignoring all of the potential partial profits and partial losses in between. Because with an option trade like this, like a spread trade, the same thing goes for crawl spreads or iron condors or iron butterflies, the slope of the line, the PL line between the strikes, represents partial profits or partial losses. In this case, you have 
you can see it very clearly here with the break-even price. The break-even price is 49. Well, that's not either a profit or a loss. It's just a break-even. So what is the expected outcome or probability of the stock getting to 49? And so what you end up finding out is that with options trades, which are not strictly binary, full loss or full profit, you have to account for all outcomes between the strike prices. That means that we have to calculate the probability of the stock reaching every single incremental strike price between those spreads prices of one side or both sides of a potential trade, and you have to account for those. So it might look something like this. Now the numbers are a little bit different for the strikes and the potential profits, but the concept remains the same, is that not only do we have to account for the probability of max loss, which we can account for here inside of our expected value formula, and not only do we have to account for the probability of max profit, and we can account for that here inside of our expected value formula, but what we have to do, and what nobody does except for what we do here at Option Alpha, is we have to calculate the partial profits and losses and the expected a prob probability of each of those events occurring. And that is this missing component to most expected value calculations when it comes to options trades. And the problem is, is that until now it was really hard to do this. You needed supercomputers and servers and processing to calculate it because you need to calculate the expected outcome of all the different possible prices, essentially, every penny increment or nickel or dime or dollar increment between the slope of this line. Because these actually are profits and we need to calculate, okay, these potential partial profits, what is the expected value of those? And then we also need to back out the expected value of these potential losses too. What, what is the expected value of those when we add up all of those expected values? This is where it becomes really cool. And if you're a math nerd like I am and you kind of geek out about this stuff, you realize how powerful this is if you can get those partial profits and partial losses in addition to the max loss and max profits calculated for your trades because now you can get a really good idea of the expected outcome of potential positions. Now, if we go over to our trade ideas, what you'll see here inside of trade ideas is that we actually calculate an option alpha the expected value of potential trades. And we do this on the fly with servers and just a lot of processing power that we put into this for you guys. We put this in here so that you can see the expected value of potential trades. And this is where the genesis of the first like stage that I'm doing here in this journey of building this expected value portfolio is I'm using this idea of using positive expected value to potentially find trades that net net, if I trade them long term, lots of op opportunities and occurrences, then I should do pretty well on those trades. So let's go here to our watch list for a second. Let's look up some bullish trades and then we'll filter for probability of profit 70% or higher. This just kind of filters out all of our trade ideas. You can find the ones that kind of work best for you. But you can see right here that some of these trades have positive expected value. So for example, this trade here in XRT, which is expiring in about two weeks from when I'm doing this video. And you can see the stock is trading at 67.16, and this looks at selling the 66 put and buying the 65 put. Now, because we're selling options out of the money, creating this bullish put spread, just like our example, we can calculate very easily the max profit, the max loss, and the probability of max profit, and the probability of max loss. Those are all those binary outcomes, full loss, full potential profit. But what we also do is we also calculate the probability of all the opportunities between there. And we can calculate the probability of making a profit, so just a dollar of profit on this potential trade, which is somewhere in between those strikes, right? Depending on where the mid price and break even is. And we also then calculate the expected value of all the possible outcomes together. And this is the really cool number right here because now we can see when we get into this type of trade, we know exactly what our expected value is. Now, does this mean that we're gonna make this amount of money on this particular trade or that this particular trade is gonna be a winner? No, it doesn't. This is still one trade. It could go any direction. There's lots of random outcomes that could happen, but we know pricing-wise and probability-wise that if we were to make trades like this over and over and over and over and over and over again, that we should have a positive expected outcome on this potential trade. 
And that's really powerful because it allows us to get into trades that are potentially a little bit more tilted in our favor, or at least not tilted out of our favor. Now, if I filter all trade ideas the opposite direction for expected value, so EV going backwards, and just looking at trades that have the lowest expected value, you can actually see in many cases why some of these trades, just looking at the math and the numbers, why these trades have negative expected value. And the goal for me is to try to avoid trades like this that might seem like they're okay, that have a good probability of profit. So if you were only looking at probability of profit, you'd be looking at this trade going, hey, this is a high probability trade. But it also might be potentially why traders make high probability trades and then end up net-net losing long-term because they're not taking in enough premium to really account for all of the possible outcomes of this trade. Now, this trade is a potentially wide trade, so you're selling options. You are selling options well below the market. Stock is trading at 451.84. You're selling the 447 and buying the 443. So you're taking in a pretty good credit of about $216, and your probability of profit is about 70%. But when we account for all of the possible outcomes that might occur, what we end up seeing is a negative expected value. Now, again, does this mean that this potential trade is going to lose? No, you still could make this trade, and you still might potentially win on this trade. In fact, 70% of the time, you might make money on this trade. But net-net, when you trade this type of trade over and over and over again long term, your expected value of this trade or the expected outcome is a negative number. And this is what we're trying to avoid as traders. We're trying to avoid trades that just aren't good trades to get into where the risk and the reward are not in our favor. We're not being compensated essentially for these types of trades. Now what I did inside the positive or the pure EV portfolio that we were kind of testing out is just tried to get into only trades that have positive expected value. And so this is just one example with XBI. We'll go through the whole portfolio and review that in the next video and just kind of touch base on where things are in one of the upcoming videos. But in this case, this one here, and it's only made a couple of trades, so it doesn't really matter right now. It's very, very early in this process. Numbers are still kind of shaking out. But you can see here in this case, and it's actually actively trying to close the position right now, that this trade, when I got into the trade, you can actually look at the trade log, which was Wednesday at 9.45. This is when this trade got into. And you can look at the trade log and you can see what the expected value was of this trade at the time that I got into it. And so you can see the expected value on the trade was $9.60. Had a 74% probability. The max loss was under the $500 threshold we set. Remember, we set these in the last video we kind of built out this expected volatility scanner. Um, and in this case, we can see what that math was on trade entry. So I know that this position, when I got into the position, was a positive expected value position. Now whether, again, this position wins or loses, doesn't matter for this one position. It's the system that we're building to try and take advantage of the expected value that is tilted in our favor, that's positive for potential trades. Very similar, like if you go into a casino, it doesn't really matter what happens on one bet or one roll, right? You might win, you might lose. What matters is what happens at the end of the night after you've done it 100 or 200 times, right? That's really where the numbers actually matters, when that system fully plays out. And so this is a good way for us to judge and to see, okay, how can we get into trades that have positive expected value and does trading just purely based on positive expected value generate enough that we would feel comfortable then turning this portfolio loose. So again, this is just purely an experimental that we're going through, but I wanted to go through just so you guys understood how we calculate expected value and how you could potentially use it for your trades. Because if you're not calculating it using those partial profits or losses, you're really missing a huge component of what could be either a great trade or a potentially bad trade that you might get into. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you have any questions, please let us know. Be on the lookout for the next video in the series. We'll probably be going through making some changes, maybe potentially spinning up some new bots for our pure EV portfolio. Again, the goal for me is I want to build out a portfolio that I can turn live. And so I'm going through this process with you all here, just showing you what I'm doing, and then also trying to teach and educate along the way about what I'm learning about EV and how you can use it for your potential trades. So I hope you guys enjoy this. If you do, let us know in the comments. And until next time, happy trading.